Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I, I pre-put my headband on, I hope you guys don't mind. Today we're diving into some more drugstore makeup. Last week I posted my five top products from five favorite drugstore brands. And I asked you guys, I'm sure multiple times throughout the video to let me know what your favorite products were. And there were so many good product recommendations in the comments of that video. I went through them all and I wrote a very lovely list and went on a little drugstore shopping trip and picked up some of your guys' top recommendations. Now I wanted to say that a few of them weren't available and that's just being in Canada for you and then a few of them I would have had to order from some pretty like far away places that I wouldn't have got in time to get this video up before everyday May is over. So I will definitely have to do a follow up to this when I am able to place an order and wait for that order to come. So stay tuned for that. If you have any other drugstore product recommendations after watching this video, let me know all of them in the comments down below, please. But I'm going to do a makeup look today, test out some of your drugstore product favorites and recommendations, and see how they perform on this face here. <laughs> Let's start with the base. I've done a layer of my Wellita Skin Food. I've had a few questions about this, which is why I wanted to mention it. It's not technically drugstore, I know, but a lot of you have been asking about it, and I just wanted to say that the packaging does look different. I don't know, like, they must have updated the packaging, but as far as I'm concerned, I, I mean, I did buy it a, a while ago. This is, like, definitely at least two years old. For sure. But as far as I know, it is just the original one. So it's just skin food. And yeah, it does look like they've updated the packaging, but the packaging now says original ultra rich cream. So to those of you who've been asking, I don't know guys, I didn't buy like a particular version. It is just older. So if there's been a reformulation I don't know about, I apologize, but that's, this is the guy I used and she is old for sure. So starting with the base, a lot of you recommended the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Dewy Foundation. I went to a few different places and there wasn't uh, this dewy foundation. And there also wasn't the new tinted moisturizer that a lot of people were recommending. So that's definitely something I'm gonna have to find online. I was looking for the, yeah, Focus Dewy Foundation and the Loose Setting Powder, but yeah, a few places I went to didn't have it. However, they did have my Photo Focus Stick Foundation in stock, blessings on blessings. So I got uh, some new fresh ones of these. I got porcelain and shell. Okay, the lid is intact, thank God. Um, I got porcelain and shell ivory, so these are back in my life, back in the collection. Love this foundation. I have used and loved that for a very, very long time. So I don't have the new ones from Wet n Wild, but we'll have to keep that, save it for a later date. A lot of you were recommending Milani bases, and I don't know if I've ever tried a base product from Milani, other than like their blushes and highlights, like their color powder products. I don't know if I've ever tried their base things. So I picked up the Milani Glow Hydrating Skin Tint, which sounds very much like something that I would love. Got this in the shade 110. And then so many of you recommended their Conceal and Perfect Longwear Concealer. So I got this one in two shades. And you know, I've got to say the packaging is very nice. Very nice. More luxe feeling. I like it. I got these in 115 light nude and 120 light vanilla. So this is the base I'm gonna play with today. I'm excited. Thank you guys for recommending it. And I also picked up the Milani Translucent Powder to go along with it. So we're just gonna do a whole Milani base, see how it looks and put it to the test. So the skin tint says a sheer to light coverage melts into the skin for a natural dewy glow. Love me the sounds of that. Let's just see, let's see how she feels in the hands. Oh, very sheer. You guys, that's really pretty. Wow, look at that. Okay, right away, right away, this feels like the Trini London tinted moisturizer that I've been loving lately, but like with slightly less coverage, which is honestly nice. Blending in like a dream. Also, the skin food really helps. Like having a hydrated base, you know? Having your skincare sorted also really helps. I think that's why so many makeup artists use like face oils and whatnot, because when you have a really nice hydrated setting for the products to apply on, obviously that can help tremendously. But this looks beautiful, you guys. Thanks for recommending it. I'm really excited to keep playing with it. And as for the shade match, like, that was a pretty perfect shade match for me. I am very excited. Let's use the concealer. I'm gonna use a lighter one to highlight the portions of my face. Just do a little bit of concealing here and then down the center. Hmm. Ooh, it's got a very strong, weird smell. I don't like that. I hate it when you open a product and you can like really intensely smell it. Okay, and then taking 120 
Oh, this is a nice color. These colors are nice. They're nice and neutral. I, uh, I find a lot of products in general, when they're in the lighter spectrum, they can pull really pink. And especially, I'm oh, sorry, I'm like making art here. <laughs> a lot of products pull really pink. I appreciate that these are very, very neutral, a little bit more on the vanilla side. That's definitely the the flavor flav that I prefer when it comes to my base products. Okay, sorry, pals. I had to put my hair up. It was driving me crazy. It was just rubbing all up in my business. Um, I'm going to take the e.l.f. hydrating coconut mist. Mist. Oh, there we go. And <laughs> I really, <laughs> I really shot up. <laughs> I'm going to put this Oh my God, on the face so I can blend it out. I also grabbed the e.l.f. Camo Concealer Sponge. The product, I had a really hard time like washing this out. I think I got most of it, but yeah, she really, she really stained since I used it last. So let's use this and blend out this concealer. Oh, that is not blending well. Are you guys seeing this? I'm just gonna try a brush just to see. Maybe it is just that sponge. This is blending out super nicely. I'm gonna keep the sponge handy just to go over the top after and kind of smooth anything else out but i'm using my mac 170 brush to blend this out it's very thick this has got a lot of coverage this concealer for sure you can use a very small amount um, i'm definitely going to go over this with the sponge after but i like those shades a lot i'm going to use the sponge to hit up the rest of my oh see it like just doesn't it doesn't blend out with the sponge. It's probably the sponge. It feels very odd since the first time I used it, honestly. It's almost like too soft. It's like too pillowy. So it's not actually like picking up any product. It's kind of, it's almost like it's just bending around it. We definitely need another sponge or the brush here. Yeah, that is some full coverage. That is a very, very flawless base. And let's use a little powder to set it in. I think this e.l.f. sponge it's nice and soft, so it'll actually be pretty great for the powder. Because we can just really, really lightly press it in. Yeah, mm. yeah, it works great for powder application. I'm getting totally like an instant blurring effect with this powder. Looks great. A++ on the Milani bases so far. As a final thought, I'm going to give this, this self sponge a pass. <laughs> yeah, we'll let this base sit and soak in. Let's move on to bronzer, bronzer contour. A lot of you recommended the Maybelline City Bronzer, which I actually already had in my collection. I, I have absolutely used this in videos before, but I have the shade 2. Hundred. The packaging's pretty gross, which makes me think that I've used this a lot more than I'm thinking or remembering. But yeah, the Maybelline City Bronzer was happy to pull this out and give it a play again. I'm gonna apply this like pretty liberally. The pigment's really nice on these. Just taking the bronzer up my cheekbone and I'm gonna blend it around around the perimeters of my face. All right, and after the TikTok makeup hacks, <laughs> I wanted to revisit the bronzer and concealer. A little moment on the nose here. So I'm gonna take my brush, I'm gonna dip it into the bronzer, and let's test this out. <laughs> in, a, in a normal fashion, if you will, when we're not doing all of the other, oh my God, people were saying Squidward, the Squidward face, it's so true. So I'm putting the layer of bronzer on my nose, and then I'm gonna go back in with the Milani concealer. Oh, I'm so shaky right now. I feel like I can't do a line. <laughs> okay. I'll just bring that up. Just do a whole proper other layer. And let's see how it looks. Oh, I think someone said the Nikki Tutorials does the light on the side too. We should do that. I absolutely should have looked that up before I just um, did that. But you know what? I like to live life on the edge, guys. <laughs> just because this sponge is being weird, I'm going to start with an eyeshadow brush. And we're going to just really lightly blend this out and we'll see how it looks. But now that I'm sitting here and really like actively trying to blend this concealer out, it very much sets. I'm having a really hard time blending it out. Like it's really just sticking and gripping. Like the idea is here, but this concealer is like really hard to blend out. I'm just patting the sponge around. So I think, yeah, this sponge is too soft for my liking, 
in comparison to like the Real Techniques one and my Beauty Blender. But that concealer got really like grippy and sticky and just, mm, it might be because we already had a layer underneath, but a lot of concealers that I use, you know, like the Makeup Forever Self-Setting Concealer, for example, it doesn't matter if you've already powdered your face. If you need to go in and correct something or you wanna go in and do another layer, you apply a cream product on top, like it doesn't affect it. It still blends out just as beautifully. So this, did not happen here with that concealer. That did not look so nice applying on another layer and I definitely do have a bit of separation and gooping up here on the nose. But back to the bronzer thing, what we were trying to accomplish, I, I'm definitely gonna try it again with like my usual daily concealers, but I'm excited by that. It's a little bit more effort than just being lazy and rubbing your bronzer around like I normally do, but if you're wanting to be a bit more precise, that's an exciting little hack to have up your sleeve. So I'm gonna take the bronzer, gotta do a little layer gotta do a little layer on the eyes. I just like it to blend in with the rest of the face. I feel like it helps to just make everything melt together. I totally didn't complete my thought there. For those of you who have this Milani concealer as a favorite, let me know what you think. What is your favorite way to apply it when you are applying it, what's your favorite way to blend it out? Do you use your fingers? Do you use a brush? Do you use a sponge? Do you have any favorite tips and tricks on how you use it? Let us know all your thoughts on that concealer in the comments below. Okay, so next up for the cheeks, a lot of you recommended these little e.l.f. bite-sized palettes. And I know a, a lot of people recommended the eyeshadows, but I saw these little e.l.f. They are called bite-sized, right? It doesn't have the name on it. But these little e.l.f. like bite-sized face palettes, I thought these were the cutest things. They have the face ones, these little blush and highlight duos, and then they have little bite-sized eyeshadows. They're so cute. They're totally available now in store here in Canada. And oh, I was so excited. They look so pretty. I picked up two shades of them. This one is lychee, a little bit more of a lighter pinky beige. And then this one is white peach, a true lovely peachy fresh blush. So excited, I absolutely wanna play with this one. Looks like it's going to be gorgeous for the summertime. So I'm gonna play with this for the blush. So white peach here. I just wanna see how pigmented it is. It's pretty, like a lot of product is coming off. I love this idea too. This size of product is so perfect. Like when's the last time you used up a blush, you know? I kinda don't mind that they're so small and they're so affordable. And the e.l.f. powder products in general are beautiful. Like look at that, look at that blush. What a pretty peach. While we're talking about it, let's pop a little bit of that into the crease as well. What the heck? I love this shade. Are you seeing how nicely that blends out too? This is great. Has anyone tried these? Little bite-sized face palettes? Love the look of this. All right, let's dip into the highlight side. In here, I just wanna see. Oh, the highlight, yeah, the highlight has some chunkies. It's some pretty chunky glitter for sure. It's not the creamiest, not the smoothest formula ever. There's some chunkies flying around. That's okay, we can just like really press it into the brush here and just apply a little bit. How cute would it be if they just brought out like this as a blush? That'd be so perfect and so perfect for travel size things. Really, really packs a punch though, damn. Like you guys saw, I just rubbed, totally rubbed that out into the palm of my hand and I'm still getting so much payoff here. I'm down, I am down for this life. How pretty is that highlight? Wow, love that, love that. Thanks for bringing this to my attention guys. I'm so excited to have this in my little, my little drugstore lineup. I'm super happy with this base. Let's move on to the lips. I'm just gonna put some lip liner on. I've seen this around a lot actually, the NYX Lip Pencil in the shade Natural, this guy right here. And I don't actually know what the rest of my makeup is gonna look like just yet, but I do just wanna get rid of the foundation look on my lips. <laughs> so I'm just gonna line my lips with this. A really nice, creamy, creamy lip pencil, honestly. Now that we have it on, I'm gonna take my Burt's Bees Peach, sweet peach, squeezy tinted balm. I feel like this will go really nice with this. You could put a little bit of that on just to soak in and hydrate, give a little very, very light peachy wash, but we'll just put that onto the lips while we move on to the eyes. Speaking of Burt's Bees, they have new cream eyeshadows. This shade right here, Honey Caramel. Look at this, new cream eyeshadows. I have three shades here. Um, I think I'm gonna use Honey Caramel though. This one, it looks like it's all cracked, which is very odd because I actually felt it and it still felt like it was very wet and creamy. 
So I don't really know why it has these cracks. It's not dried out or anything, you know, it's still very soft. So that was a little bit interesting, but they look so beautiful, these cream shadows. So I really want to give this a little play here. <laughs> and we already worked some product into the crease. So I'm just gonna take this on to the lid and kind of build up a nice little, oh my God, sorry. The camera always focuses on the mirror, guys. I don't know what to say, I'm so sorry. I'm just gonna kind of build this onto the base. How beautiful is this shadow? Totally reminds me of the old school Maybelline Bad to the Bronze, but with a little bit more of a warmer feeling. The Maybelline one almost always felt like a little bit more on the taupey side, like MAC Satin Taupe. Oh my God, what a throwback. Do you guys remember? Ugh. But this one's like a true bronze. If I was in charge of naming it, I wouldn't have named it Honey Caramel. I would have named this bronze because that's literally just what it looks like. True bronze, that's pretty. That's a really pretty combo actually. This little um, like peachy blush shade in the crease paired with this, <gasps> love that. So for an eyeshadow topper, this is a shout out to some of my Canadian gals. Someone recommended the Annabelle Chrome eyeshadows. It's the Chrome Creamy Single Eyeshadow. They look absolutely beautiful. Let me give them a swatch here for you. Oh, I was not expecting that. Okay, okay, hold on. I want you guys to look at this. Look at the tin. You would think that lo it looks like the NARS, it looks like the NARS shadows, but it totally is creamy. I was so surprised when I flipped it and it said creamy. I'm like, what do you mean? It is, it's a cream. <laughs> it's totally a creamy cream eyeshadow. How cool. But it has that like nice chunky glitter sparkle. You know what? This is completely a same feeling formula as the Rowan cream eyeshadows. Okay, I feel like this one is not properly named. This one's a totally like a true champagne. But here is the shade gold. You see what I mean? I'm like, this is the shade gold and this is not. Like this is a gold, anyway, whatever. It's totally creamy, but it has like very reflective chunks in it, but not like chunky. It's totally smooth. Look at that. Oh, wow. Okay, so the gold one is the shade Orium. Let me swatch this one for you. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, there's the two side by side. How beautiful is that? Oh my goodness, wow, okay. Love the packaging, so simple, so small, no fuss. Was not expecting that creamy, delicious formula. Okay, to my Canadians out there, Canadian brands, Annabelle, Marcel, etc. What are your favorites? You have some favorites? To whoever recommended this, thank you so much. So I'm just gonna dip my finger into that and place this onto the top of the eye. Like, are you kidding? Guys, this is the Rowan shadow. If you were looking for a dupe of the Rowan cream shadows, look no further. This is crazy. It's so, so pigmented. Wow, if you wanted to bedazzle your eyes, Batman, holy. This is like some astronaut wedding-ish, honestly. <laughs> okay, that's amazing. Go Annabelle, I'm super excited about that. For my Canadians out there, let me know. Have you tried these? Would love to see more shades from that. <gasps> gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, for mascara, I was so happy with how many of you guys said that you went out and tried the Revlon Big Bad Lash and that you loved it too. So I thought I would crack open the fresh new tube, give it a run here. The very Dan approved mascara. <laughs> it is so pretty. It's such a pretty mascara, you guys. Look, ugh. If you haven't tried it, get your hands on this. It is fabulous, fabulous, fluttery, huge, lifting, beautiful lashes. Okay, speaking of mascara, a lot of you recommended the Wet n Wild Skinny Mega Slim Mascara for lower lashes, but that Skinny Mega Slim Mascara was not there at Walmart. Um, but Annabelle, again, another pick from Annabelle, had the Skinny Mascara. And so I picked this up, wanted to see if it would be a great dupe for the mascaras like my MAC Extended Play Mascara, like the Clinique Bottom Lash Mascara, just to see how a mascara like this applies on the lower lashes. Love the signs of this, love this little skinny wand. Let's give it a go. Yes, yes ma'am. <gasps> wow. Also has a very strong, terrible smell, but is this bottom lash perfection screaming at us right now? Look at this. What a joy to use, wow. Lovely, go Annabelle. I absolutely need to try more. Little bottom lash mascara for you, how exciting. 
Very excited about that. So guys, I guess, yeah, that's the look. All right, pals and gals, that is everything for this makeup look. These are all of the products that I got off your recommendation. Thank you so much to everyone who let me know what some of their drugstore favorites were. I had so much fun going for a little shop for these and putting them to the test for you on this fine day. So let me know what you think of this look. Let me know what you think about the products that I used today. And please hit the comments below if you have any more recommendations, any other product favorites that, um, that I can buy, that <laughs> I can buy. Note that I am in Canada, but if you have any other favorites and if you want me to do a part two of this, I will absolutely do that and go scour the online for some fun things that I can't necessarily pick up in store. So please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Give this video a big thumbs up if you like videos like this. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see a part two in the future, friends. And yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all very soon for the final few days of Everyday May. Bye!